Today I thought I'd run you through how to use masks to make colouring a whole bunch easier. So here we have a really basic drawing that I just knocked together. We've got one layer for the lines uh, on a blank paper background. I've set up a couple of colours layers here, though they are blank. And we're going to try and fill in the colour on this and use masks to make colouring easier as stated. So first let's, let's just block fill the whole page in for a colour. And now we're going to create a mask, a layer mask, on this base colour here. Now the way masks work is rather like masking tape, they cover over bits where you don't want colour to be. So here I can erase, and if I go back onto the layer itself, if I try to colour in, you'll notice the colour doesn't enter the mask. Check me out, look, nothing's happening there. Uh, and you can see that it's the, the ink has still been placed. If we go to disable the mask, we'll see that the colour's under there, but we can enable the mask and it's hidden. So I'll just undo uh, that colour there. And I'm going to use a reference layer here to make making the mask easier. So I'm going to go to the face layer, set it as a reference layer, go back to uh, my mask, Go to my eraser tool, and down here I've got do not cross lines on the reference layer. Now this is available in the tool settings under anti-overflow. Uh, I really love this because it means I'm just going to get a really big eraser and erase. And look, it's not overlapping my lines here. So I can super quick and easily fill in the mask around this little little tiger guy. There's a gap here that's too small, so I can just toggle off do not cross lines of reference layer. There we go, we'll just, just erase those little extra bits. So we've got a mask in place here. We can toggle it off and see that the colour's all there, but when it's on, colouring will be super easy now, so if I want to go and give this guy some lighter fuzz on his cheeks, I can go in with my turnip pen and I'm not overflowing here. You see? Super convenient. Now let's say you want to divide your colours between multiple lines, uh, multiple layers, sorry. So you see we've got this layer here where I'm going to put uh, details for the face. So we can create, uh, I'll tell you what, if I create some uh, some pink for his mouth, and I fill it in real big, Ooh. spill it over the actual image. So I can create a mask for just this layer, using the technique of before, not crossing the lines of the reference layer, uh, super easily masked out, and in fact I've got a mask around his nose even though I've not coloured it in yet, because then I can go back to the layer, colour in his nose without overflowing, super easy. Now, this might be trickier to do on tablet. Dragging and dropping is harder. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the mask and I'm going to go Edit, Cut. And once that's done is that's cut the whole layer, so let's not do that. I'm going to create a selection from this layer. Now I can create a mask using the selection I've currently got. I've created this mask again on the parent folder. So we can delete the mask down here. And we'll see, remember there was um, pink from the face overflowing before. This mask, because it's on the folder, applies to all the child layers. So the face, if I delete its mask, doesn't overflow the whole thing. So you can intelligently stack layers like this, stack the masks, so you don't have to mask out absolutely everything. But there we go. So now I can go about uh, my colouring pretty merrily and colour in the, uh, the eyes here. And I don't have to worry about spilling out onto the face because I've masked things. I would suggest not going overboard with masks, otherwise you'll, um, you'll get hung up on them and you'll end up spending all of your time creating masks for things rather than actually drawing. So use them sparingly. I tend to use them nowadays for just separating the foreground and background and sometimes doing extra layers on the face 
is when I'm coming in with my airbrush and doing some more complicated shading. For example, on this nose, if I wanted to give him a nice soft airbrush glow. It's really helpful to have a mask because the airbrush has quite fuzzy edges so it can spill out. So stuff like that, super useful to have a mask, you see. Um, just like that. And remember, we can enable and disable our masks. There is also, if you're drawing masks on a white background, sometimes you might want to see the mask area. So that applies a translucent blue color. You can customize the color in Clip Studio's preferences, but it shows you where your mask is. So I can see here, there's gaps where my mask doesn't apply. So if I started coloring again, look, my face spills out over here, which is no good. So I can just go to the mask and add to it. Spill out the blue more, uh, and then if I choose not to show the mask area, you can see that my mask is active. Uh, even if the mask is visible, when you export the image, as you can see from the preview up here, the mask is not visible. It's just there to help you when you're drawing. But yeah, that's a super simple way to make your shading easier using masks. Hopefully that's helped.